What are you willing to do? Are you willing to move at the word of God? Are you willing? See, faith without works is dead being alone. Which means I can't just sit and hope and wish that this thing is going to change. Boy, I sure do hope my marriage is going to change. What are you going to do about it? Well, I sure do hope that my, my uh, family's going to change. What are you going to do about it? What kind of faith are you going to exert? But I really do. See, the situation with my finances, I need to see it turn around. What kind of faith are you going to exert in that area to see it happen? Listen, whatever you have is what you've got to start working with. Work what you got. And the miracle kept happening as long as there was jars. Are you willing to carry some jars so that you can see the miracle? 2 Kings 4 says, Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. Now right here, if you just follow the story, slow down to the speed of revelation, this is somebody Elisha knew. This is another prophet, another prophet in the school of prophets. This is someone that Elisha had some form of relationship, and now he's dead. And his wife comes to Elisha and says, we're in trouble. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? I, I, I think I just told you. <laughs> He's doing the same thing that Jesus did. Answering the question with the question. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What do you have in your hand? Tell me something. Get your eyes on something where God wants to, God wants to show you something that you have that He's going to bring forth a miracle through. Now watch this. And, and uh, so what shall I do for you? Tell me. Watch this. What do you have in your house? Now, let me ask you the same question today because a lot of you are wondering, how am I going to do this? Where is this going to happen? What's, how, where's the miracle going to come from? How is this thing going to move? I mean, how is things going to change? The answer is, what do you have in your house? And if you can answer that question and see what you have that will produce the miracle and you can be obedient with it, then God can move you anywhere he wants to move you. If you're willing to stretch yourself, what do you have in your house? Well, I got a little bit of joy, work it. Well, you know, I, 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 got, I, I got a little bit of talent in this area, use it. What do you have in your house? Look at it because that's what's going to be the seed that produces the harvest. That's going to be the thing that God uses to bring forth a miracle. And, and so what do you have in your house? And she said, your servant has nothing. Now that's what most people do. I don't have anything. <laughs> Didn't you just hear what I said to you? I have nothing. The creditors are going to come and take my two sons away and make them slaves. I have nothing in the house. But then here comes a light bulb, except uh, I do have a, I have a jar of oil. I have a jar of oil. Watch what he says. Go and do what? Go outside. Go out. Stretch yourself. Get outside of where you've been. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your depression. Get out of your fear. Get out of your anxiety. Get out of your worry. And start moving in the word, at the word of God. Go out. Watch. Go out and do what? Borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Empty vessels and not too few. Get as many as you can. Then go in and shut the door behind, you, behind yourself and your sons. And pour into all the vessels from the one jar. Pour into all the vessels, and when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her and her sons, and as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, <laughs> 
they continued to overflow. And she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. As long as there's jars, there's oil. Now watch this because I'm going to take it in a few different directions. Number one, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We are jars of clay. And as long as we offer ourselves to the Lord, there's oil for our lives. There's oil. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Burning till the break of day. As long as I can offer my vessel to God, he can fill me. He can fill me as long as I offer myself. But we see something here that the miracle started with what she had. All I have is, a, is one jar of oil. Okay, are you willing to go get more jars? What are you willing to do? Are you willing to move at the word of God? Are you willing? See, faith without works is dead being alone, which means I can't just sit and hope and wish that this thing is going to change. Well, I sure do hope my marriage is going to change. What are you going to do about it? Well, I sure do hope that my, my uh, family is going to change. What are you going to do about it? What kind of faith are you going to exert? Boy, I really do. See, the situation with my finances, I need to see it turn around. What kind of faith are you going to exert in that area to see it happen? Don't think that you're going to get a job sitting on your couch doing nothing. You've got to get out. You've got to put out some resumes. You've got to get out there and put yourself out there where somebody can say, this is the person. Listen, whatever you have is what you've got to start working with. Work what you got. And the miracle kept happening as long as there was jars. Are you willing to carry some jars so that you can see the miracle? So what happened here? They poured oil in all of their neighbors' jars and then sold it back to them. They took empty jars and sold it back to them full and then had enough money to pay off the creditors. <laughs> Started with a little oil. But that oil was offered to God. And when it was offered to God, God produced a miracle. Are you willing to give God your business? Are you willing to give God your marriage? Are you willing to give God your family? Are you willing to say, God, I can't do any of this without you? Here's, here's the jar. God, I need your oil. Fill it today. And the moment that the jars were no longer offered, the oil ceased. You want a miracle to stop? You stop offering what you have. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Faith is a now thing. So it's not about the faith I had yesterday and what I did yesterday. I've got to continue offering jars today for the miracle to continue to move. The moment I stop moving is the moment that God stops moving because God won't move without me. When I say that, I'm not saying God stops moving. What I'm saying is he stops moving in that area of my life. Because I won't continue to offer what I have for God to continue filling it, working through it, making it happen. So today, before we close, before I pray for you, I want you to think about it. What is it that you're sitting on and you're saying, I got nothing. And it's like you're, you know, it's a thought way over here except, you know. You know, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So what that tells me is if I feel without strength, what I need to do is offer God the, the little joy I got so that he can fill me to the fullness. Apply that to every area of your life. What is the thing that I have that will produce the ongoing miracle if I'll continue to offer it to the Lord? Now, let me give you a hint as I close. The Bible says this. This is not Alan. This is the Bible. 
The Bible says that be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Which means that everything that I have will produce after its kind. So if I want to see a financial blessing, then I have to offer my finances to God. If I want to see my talents grow, I have to offer my talents to God and use them for His glory, and He'll continue to cause that talent and that ability to grow. Right? I'll give you an example, a little example. I haven't played the guitar up on a stage in front of people, and I won't tell you because then you'll date me. Let's just say many, many years. I'm not nervous to get up in front of people, but today I was a little jittery because I was thinking, man, I'm about to do something I haven't done in a long time. But you know what my prayer was? My prayer was this. My prayer was, God, here, 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 I have this gift. I mean, I'm not, you know, Van Halen or anything. But I can play some chords and I want to offer it to you, God. What I'm asking is that you would give me the grace. See, once you offer it, then the grace can be applied. Offer it to the Lord. So what is it that you have and know that what it is will produce more like it? You want more joy? Offer the joy that you have to the Lord. You want more peace? Take that peace and, and work in it. If you want more understanding, move in the understanding that you have. If you want more wisdom, use the wisdom that you got. Because God's not going to waste anything. You stop offering jars, there's no oil. But you offer the jar, here comes the oil. I would go ahead and tell you, just based upon what I read in the story, if they, they ran out of jars, and obviously they stopped there. And they had enough for their miracle, so I guess that's why they stopped. But because the blessing and the word was upon that, if they would have kept on going from town to town and getting jars, as long as there's a jar, there's going to be oil. We have to think that way. Because a lot of times, watch this, when we get what we ask, we're done. Listen to what I'm telling you, and that's the problem. You've made the miracle about you. This miracle didn't just bless them and get them out of debt, but it put oil back in the pantries of all of her neighbors. She could have had a move across the area with an oil business if she would have just kept saying, give me your jar. And the moment we say, that's it, I got what I asked for, we stop ourselves from being able to go further than we've ever gone before because we stop trusting, thinking, I've got what I need. Don't make it about you. Keep on saying, okay, God, thank you for meeting my need. Now, can you bring it to a place of overflow where it will begin to flow out of me into everybody else's life? Have you ever thought that maybe even the jars in the story are you? And God wants to fill you so that then you can be poured into someone else and fill them up. That your bucket is filled so that you can fill somebody else's bucket. Would you stand to your feet? Yeah, come on, give the Lord a praise.